Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our Facebook page, Study Medi, RTC Study Medi. Uh, all of you know that uh, we have started our live classes on our Facebook page. Uh, uh, as you know, last we have taken a class on mathematics, and the chapter was set theory. Okay. So this is the second class on the chapter set theory. Hope all of you watched the last class. If you missed the class, then you can get the class in our Facebook page. So let's begin the second class on set theory. Okay. So in our last class, we have discussed. definition of set and how can you represent a set there are two methods one is raster method another one is property method and what are the types of set like there are there is a infinite set there is a finite set inside a finite set there are two special set now uh, their name uh, is singleton set that is if the set contain only one element then th that is a singleton set and if the set doesn't have any element then the set is a null set and also we have discussed about subset and proper subset so we'll start today uh, from subset again so in our last class we have discussed what is the definition of subset the subset definition was if x belongs to a if that implies that x belongs to b then a will be a subset of b and by example suppose a is a set it contains 1 2 3 3 three numbers and b is another set whose elements are 1 2 3 4 and 5 suppose Okay. Now every element of A is an element of B. That means if x belongs to A, that will imply that x will be inside of B also. Then you can say A is a subset of B. And what was the proper subset? Proper subset was if A subset B and A is not equal B. That means there will be an extra element in B which is not inside A. Then we can write A is proper subset of B. When we use the word proper, then we we have to use the symbol only subset. Do not use the equal symbol here. So this. indicates that a is a proper subset of b and similarly in a, in other word you can say if a is the proper subset of b then also you can write b is the super set of a what th that is mean b is super set of a when a is a proper subset of b then b is known as the super subset of a okay this is the subset and proper subset okay let's take an example suppose we have some sets a is a b c b is another set whose elements are a and b and c is another set whose elements are c and b now there are three question first one is b subset a second one is c is the subset of b and third one is a subset of a 
Now see the first one. This claims that B is proper subset of A. This symbol is proper subset symbol. So see what is the definition of proper subset? Every element of B will be an element of A and there will be an element in A which is not inside B. Now see the set B. The elements of B is A and B and see the number uh, set A. The elements of A is set A is A, B and C. So uh, you can see that every element of B is an element of A but there is an extra element inside A which is not inside B. So you can say that B is the proper subset of A. So this one is right. Now see the second one. This is saying that C is proper subset of B. Check again. Where is C? The elements of C is C and D. Whereas the element of B are A and B. So C. There is an element C inside the set C. But there is no element inside C. B. There is no C element inside B. So you can't say C is the proper subset of B or C is not a subset. If C is not a subset of B, then you, ha you can't say C is a proper subset. Okay. First of all, C should be a subset of B. And what was the definition of subset? Every element of C will be an element of B. But here the C element is inside the set C but there is no C element inside the set B. So this one is incorrect. See the third one. Here it is a set. There is no name given of that set. Okay, you know that what is the representation of set? This is a single term set because only one single element is inside the set. So this is a single term set which is a proper subset of A. Now again check the definition. Each element of that set is an element of A. So A is an element of that set. So you can see A is also the element of capital A set. So by the definition of proper subset you can say that this is a proper subset of A. So this one is also correct. Okay. Understood? So this is all about subset and proper subset. And there is another term superset. If A is the proper subset of B, then B is the superset of A. Okay. Okay, our next topic is when two sets will be equal. Okay, equal sets. When you, when you can say that two sets will be equal, when you can say that two sets will be equal, if, suppose there is there are two sets A and B, if A is subset of B and B is also subset of A, then you can say that A is equal to B. Okay, symbolically, this is the definition. If A is subset of B and also B is the subset of A, then you can say that A is equal to B. Okay, take an example. Suppose A is a set 2, 4, 3, 1 and B is another set suppose 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now see, each element of A is an element of B. Or symbolically you can write if x belongs to A that implies x belongs to B. Therefore A is subset of B. This is the definition. This is the way you can show that uh, one set is a subset of another set. Okay, take an, uh, and uh, similarly you can say if y is belongs to b that will imply y will be inside of a 
See, if 1 is inside B, then 1 is inside A, 2 is inside B, 2 is inside A, and so on. So, from this you can write B is subset of A. So, suppose this is number 1, this is number 2. So, using 1 and 2, A is subset of B. Similarly, B is subset of A. So, using 1 and 2, you can write A is equals to B. That means, the set A and B both are equal. And in general, if it is given in the roster method, then easily you can see the elements if it is a finite set. Easily you can see the elements if the all the elements are same in between these two sets, then you can say these two sets are equal sets. Okay. Now the next one is these are the uh, various what I can say terminology of set. Next one is uh, suppose I am taking some sets. Okay. Suppose A is a set, I am taking the sets 1, 2, 3. B is another set. Suppose these uh, sets elements are minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And C is another set 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8. And suppose D is another set whose elements are uh, minus 12, minus uh, 13, minus 10, 0, etc. Okay. I am taking four sets here A, B, C, D. Now, what, uh, what is the common thing in, between, in, in among these four sets? The elements of each set, the elements of each set is a integer. Okay. See, 1, 2, 3, these are positive integers, these are negative integers. Uh, these are also positive integers and these are negative integers with 0. So, I am taking all of these 4 sets from a particular, uh, the elements of these 4 sets from a particular set which is the integer set and you know the integer set's elements are 0, 1, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3 and so on. Okay. So, every element uh, each element of the set A, B, C, D is an element of set Z. Then this Z set is known as universal set for these four sets. Okay, so this is known as universal set. So in, in, uh, in set theory, whenever you are dealing some problem, uh, there will be some sets and the elements of that set will be uh, will come from a particular set. That set is known as the universal set for that problem. Okay, so that's why universal set, set is important. So this is an universal set. Okay, next one is a very important set. This is known as power set. These are various type of set. Okay, what is power set? I am taking an example of set of elements A, B and C. Now, if I ask you how many subsets are there of the set A? How many subsets are there of the set A? Now, you can write that number one, uh, this is a subset of A. If I take one one element set, then this is another subset of element uh, set A, and these are the these are the singleton subset of the given set A. Now, if I take two two element subset, then you can write A B is a subset of A. B, C is also a subset of uh, a subset of A, and C, A is also a subset of A. Okay, these are the subsets whose element two, uh, which has two elements. And number three, 
if I take three element then only the given set is the subset of the that means uh, every set is subset of its own so I am taking ABC is also a subset a subset of the given set ok and fourth one is this is important null set null set is subset of every set ok so the last one is the null set ok right I am writing null set is subset of every set this is important and this one is every set is a subset of its own ok these are two important things null set is subset of every set and every set is a subset of its own so how many subset uh, we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so there are 8 subsets if a set A whose elements uh, there are 3 elements inside A then we can get 8 subsets ok now if I take this subsets as an element of a set ok what is that now I am making a set whose subsets or whose elements will be this subsets then it will look like I am making a set whose elements are A, B, C and A, B I am taking these subsets and 5 ok so this is a I am making a set whose elements are the subset of a given set this is the given set ok A so this set is known as the power set of A and it is denoted as it is denoted as P of capital A so this is a power set this is the symbol of power set capital P of capital A that means the power set of A is the all the subsets of A ok how many if there are 3 elements then there will be 8 subsets and remember phi is the subset of every set and every set is the subset of its own ok now but if there is a uh, suppose there is a set A there and the number of elements are 4 ok then how can you find the number of elements of its power set ok so there is a simple formula for that you can find out the number of elements in power set of a given set or simply what is the cardinality of a power set if a set is given what is the cardinality of a power set you know that what is the cardinality cardinality means number of elements ok so the formula is suppose a set is given whose cardinality is n ok n is a natural number a set is given whose, card whose cardinality is n then cardinality of its power set is 2 power n now check check it the last set we have taken a b c so what is the cardinality 3 therefore cardinality of its power set will be 2 to the power 3 that means 8 ok so using this formula directly you can find out the number of subsets of a set that means cardinality of a power set now there is a question 
Suppose uh, if A is given A, B, C, D, how many proper subset A has? What will be the answer? Proper subset. Think. So, what will you do? First, you will find the number of subset. What is the number of subset of A? That means uh, cardinality of its power set is 2 power 4, that is 16. Okay? So, there are 16 subsets and total number of proper subset will be 15. Why? Because inside uh, the all subsets there is a set which is the set itself. So, that set is not the proper subset. Suppose in the last example, what are the subset? There is a subset that one is 3 that A, B, C set of A that is A is also A, B, C. So, this is the set, this is not a proper subset. So, how many proper subset will be of a set? Just take the number of subset and subtract 1. That is 16 minus 1. You can write in that way 16 minus 1 or 50. So, in that way you can find the proper subset. And if, it is, if the question is how many subset, then the answer is 16. So, this is a power set. This is another important uh, set. So, what we learned till now from the first class, we have learned what is the definition, how many uh, type of representation of a set, then what are the types of set, then today what is subset, proper subset, super set, and what is the equal set, what is the universal set, what is the power set. Okay, these are the these things already we have learned. Okay, next. Okay, take some uh, proof. Uh, I just told that phi is a subset of every set. So the question is why? Why phi is the subset of every set? Suppose there is a set A given. Okay, and suppose the elements are A, B, C, and there is a pi set which doesn't have any element. So, a set is given A, and uh, pi is the null set. Now, it is possible if it is possible that pi, okay, I'm writing let pi is not a subset of A. What is the uh, statement pi is a subset of A. Now, I'm taking that pi is not a subset of A. Then what will happen? At least pi will have one element that will that will be that will be not an element of A. That implies pi has one element which is not belongs to set A, phi is an one element which is not belongs to set A, but there is no element inside phi, phi has one element, this line contradicts because phi has no elements, so this is a contradiction, this is a contradiction. Because by the definition we know that phi don't have any element. So we can't write phi has one element which is not belongs to A. So if this is a contradiction, then our assumption is wrong. So that implies 
pi is a subset of a this type of proving method is known as contradictory method okay so by contradiction we can prove that phi is a subset of every element in the same way also you can prove that every set is a subset of its own okay you will do it by your own Okay. Now next thing is we have learned a uh, power set. Hmm. Now I am giving one example, one question. Suppose uh, A is a set whose elements are x square minus 3x plus 2 equals to 0. Okay. And B is another set whose elements x such that x is a digit of the number 212. Now the question is. Yes or no. A equals to B. This is true or false. This is the question. How can you show that two set will be equal? So let's find out the elements of both the sets. What will be the elements of A? Uh, what is a? a is x such that x is the root of this quadratic equation and solve this quadratic equation the quadratic equation is x square minus 3x plus 2 is equals to 0 so there is 2 that means you can write 202 so x square minus 2x minus x plus 2 equals to 0 by so taking x common x minus 2 minus common x minus 2 is equals to 0 so x minus 2 multiplied x minus 1 okay is equals to 0 therefore x equals to 2 and 1 so the roots are the, the roots of this quadratic equation is 2 and uh, roots of the quadratic equation are 2 and 1 so therefore the a element is set a elements are 2 and 1 this is the set a given this is the property method, this is in the form of roster method. And what will be the element of set B? See the set, read it, x such that x is a uh, digit of the number 212. So what are the digits are there? 2, what are the digits of 212? 2, 2, 1 and 2. Okay, so what will be the x value? x value will be 2 or 1. You can't take both two because that will uh, contradict the definition of set. All the elements will be different. So B is a set whose elements are two and one only. So easily you can see that all the elements are same. So these two sets are equal. Okay. So A is subset of B and B is also subset of A. So therefore this one is like a is equals to b in that way you can prove two sets are equal or not okay so till now we have discovered uh, many things about set theory now i will tell uh, I, I want to uh, say the representation of set again because there is another type of representation of set that is different from the previous two and that one is known as Venn diagram 
using this Venn diagram method you can represent a shape using rectangle and circle okay so using rectangular and, and circular diagram you can represent a shape here this is known as Venn diagram at first this is known uh, the, the, that method is known as uh, Euler diagram First, it is known as Euler diagram because first Euler introduced this method. Then later, John John Venn developed this method. So, uh, according to their names, uh, this method is known as Venn diagram. And what is that method? So, using rectangle and circle, we can represent any set. Suppose I am taking a universal set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. This is the universal set and A is a set which is the subset of the universal set. Suppose I am taking the uh, numbers 4, 5, 6. Okay. So how can you represent this two set using the Venn diagram method? First, you have to draw a rectangle that indicates the universal set. So this rectangle is the universal set. So I am writing it U. And inside U, what are the elements? 1, 2, 10. So I am writing the elements 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Okay, so this is the universal set U. Now, what is the set A? A is the set whose elements are 4, 5, 6. Okay, now subsets we will use the circle. This set A contains 4, 5 and 6. So, taking this 4, 5 and 6 make a circle. Okay, so two is here. So this is the circle whose elements are inside the circle. The elements four, five, and six are there. So this is the set A. So using this Venn diagram, you can show that uh, what is the universal set and what is the set A. Now I am shading this set A. Okay, you have to shade the set. A. So this is the set A. Now if I take another set, suppose uh, B, B is B or the B is the set whose elements are suppose 3, 10 and 9. Okay. So taking the circle, this is not touching. The, the two sets are not touching to each other because the elements are different. So this is the another set which is set B. So using the web diagram you can represent a set. And why we are using this diagram? Because later when we will discuss about the operations of set uh, like union, intersection, then we will use that Venn diagram to uh, understand better. Okay. So next one is the operations on set. So in arithmetic, we have addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. These are the operations in arithmetic. Similarly, in set theory, we have some operations. Uh, these operations are union of two sets. I am writing the operations names. So this is the operations of sets okay first one is union of two sets then intersection of two sets and third one is disjoint sets Fourth is 
subtraction of sets and fifth one is complement of a set okay so these are the operations we will learn in set theory just like arithmetic operations so today we will uh, discuss the first one what is union of two sets okay for now i'm raising this four so first one is union of two sets or it has another name join join of two sets first you uh, see the example suppose we have a set a whose elements are 1 2 3 and another set b whose elements are uh, so there are common two common elements are 2 3 4 5 okay and suppose there is another element c uh, set c whose elements are uh, there is no common thing between a and c suppose the elements are 7 8 9 and 10 so writing union of two sets first we will learn how to find the union of two sets then you can take it uh, three or four so what will be the union of two sets i'm writing union of two sets and its symbol is using the capital u a union b that indicates a union b that means union of two sets it will be the, the elements of a inside this set this is a set okay this is a new set whose, which, which is a union b whose elements will be elements of a or elements of b okay elements of a or elements of b so what will be the elements of a 1 2 3 and what will be the elements what is the elements of uh, what are the elements of b uh, these are 2 3 4 5 so already we have written 2 3 so we will not uh, we will not write the 2 3 then take the 4 and 5 okay so taking all the elements of a and b that will give you the union of two sets and if you write it in a symbolically so x or in property method x says that x belongs to a or x belongs to b so this is the union of a and b what will be the x x will be of a or x will be of b and sometimes we use this symbol instead of or so this is the symbol of or so x belongs to a or x belongs to b okay so you have to take all the elements of a and uh, b also so this is the union of two sets now if i uh, if I uh, try to find the union of A and C, see the elements of A is 1, 2, 3 and elements of C are 7, 8, 9, 10. So the A union C will be 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10. So in that way you can find out the union of two sets. So uh, and if I ask what is the union of A, B and C? find out what is the union of a b and c so first take the elements of a 1 2 3 then what is the elements of b uh, only 2 3 is there so write 4 and 5 and then the elements of c 8, 7 8 9 10 so this is the union of a b and c so this is one operation of set theory so in that way we will learn all the operations in our next class for now uh, we are ending here and if you are not uh, you haven't watched the last class you can watch it from our facebook page or you can uh, you can uh, search it on 
our face uh, YouTube channel. There is a YouTube channel we have. Its name is RPC Study Buddy. Okay, RPC Study Buddy. You can search it on YouTube. There are many lecture on various topics in on various subjects. There are uh, lots of teachers are there who are giving their uh, their best uh, to help you. You can study from this channel RPC Study Study Buddy. And please uh, share this uh, video uh, on our uh, which is on our page uh, Facebook page and uh, please like our Facebook page and share as, uh, as much as possible uh, to your friends because uh, uh, all of you know that uh, only in that way we can now study uh, study at our home so please uh, share our videos and support us thank you